gonna run up to her, surprise her. She didn't know what time we were coming. I'm so excited. So come on, let's meet our average Joe. No, folks. <laughs> Hi, Hi, Kelly. Jennifer. Yes. Hi, I'm Kelly. How are you? Hi. <laughs> Sorry for all the <laughs> Welcome to the Average Joe Cooking Show. I'm your host, Kelly Scott, and we're here with a very special guest, our Average Joe, Jennifer Shuck. Let's meet her. Hi, Jennifer. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. Good. Thank you for welcoming us into your beautiful home. She was so gracious enough to just let us take a look around. She's got two beautiful dogs <laughs> and a kitty cat around here somewhere. So she's really been great at welcoming us into her home. So let's let's talk a little bit about you and what you do and what your day is like. I know you're extremely busy. I know you're a teacher at one of the local area schools here. So tell us a little bit about your day. I've been a teacher for 11 years now. Okay, and you've always taught art? I've taught art, yes. Oh, how exciting. My little one loves art. Yes. So I'm sure the kids are quite rambunctious and you know high-spirited and all of that. So by the time you get home, are you like exhausted and don't want to cook or are you like, very I, happy to get home and ready to do something different. I always want to cook. <laughs> I, I mean, because I've always cooked mm -hmm. suppers, and we've always sat down to suppers together Great. as a family. So um, I'm just used to getting home first mm -hmm. before my husband and okay. getting a meal ready. Okay, now does he help you cook at all? Uh, no, no. <laughs> when we first got married, <laughs> but uh, no, he right. doesn't. He gets home very late. Um, okay. So now your kids are all grown at yes. this point, but you do have one living at home. How much yes. help is she in the kitchen? She's not very much help. <laughs> <laughs> she does not know how to cook. So you do this all by yourself every day? Yes, I do. Okay. You sound like me. <laughs> and probably like the rest of our viewers, right? That's what makes us the average Joe is because we do all of this by ourselves and we have to get it done. That's right. So you don't have any training or anything like that this is just something you love to do right that's right um well actually i started cooking when i was very young i was right. maybe 10 years old okay when i started cooking. that's right yes we talked a little bit about that so yes. you have what i think is really interesting about jennifer is she started cooking in her family very very young and she as a kid she had this great great insight to do what i wanted to collect recipes from all of my relatives mm -hmm. before, um, you know, they left us. Um, mm -hmm. And so I would go around whenever we visited them, I would write down recipes for How my great aunts. How amazing is that as a little child to have that, that vision and that perception and to, to want to have basically a legacy for your family. Right. So that's what you're working on now, yes. which is a cookbook. So I definitely want to talk about that a little bit. I think that's so cool to be doing that. So how far are you along in the cookbook? I'm just about finished. Okay. Um, I just have a few more um, chapters to do. Okay. Under, like I'm doing like poultry and beef and all those wow. kind of recipes and appetizers okay. and um, so and these are I, all family recipes. They're family recipes or they're friends of mm -hmm. the family. So okay. they're all relatives and, um, or there's some of my recipes too. That's great. Now, do you have a name for the book? So, we, cause we want to watch for it. We want to be looking for it <laughs> for sure. It's called Jennifer's Favorites. Jennifer's Favorites. That's her cookbook. We still have some unfinished business with that, but I'm sure it'll be coming very soon, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you also have some kind of heritage things. I think your husband is from the Netherlands. Yes, he is. Okay. So do you have some interesting recipes from there as well? I do. I've uh, recorded recipes from my mother-in-law okay. and father-in-law before they they passed away. Oh, so, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. I didn't know that they passed. But uh, yeah, so I have a lot of her honey cake recipes and different. Honey cake, that sounds and, interesting. And uh, her Dutch soup recipes okay. and different things. Great. Yeah. That's great. So what are you going to be preparing for us today? Actually, it is a recipe from my aunt, mm -hmm. Liz. Um, she was quite a character. Uh, <laughs> Um, she uh, lived in Hamilton, Ontario, and I used to visit her every Sunday okay. when I went to school in Hamilton. Okay. And uh, she would make this chicken paprikash, which is uh, paprika chicken. Okay. And her background is Croatian. She's Croatian. Well, that's great. So that's what we're going to be making today. And we're going to go ahead and get things set up and move into the kitchen. We'll be right back after this. We're here in the 
kitchen of our average Joe, Jennifer Shook, and we're getting ready to prepare this wonderful meal. I really can't wait, I'm so excited. <laughs> During the break, that's all we've been talking about is how wonderful this food is gonna smell and I can't wait to dig in. So let's hurry up and get started. <laughs> I think we've got quite a bit of work to do. So what do you start with first? Well, usually I start by putting a pot of water on the stove. Okay, which we've noodles. already got boiling I've for got the noodles. boiling, so I start with the onions first. Okay. And I Peel these onions. Mm -hmm. Now, this is how I peel the onions, but I mean, everybody has their way of doing it. This is true, and all we can stress is do it safely. <laughs> the, the way that you feel safe. Right, right, right the way exactly. that you feel safe doing it. Now, would you slice it or do you quarter it? These How do you are going to be diced. Okay, diced. We were able to finish chopping up the fresh vegetables for the meal. Now we need to go ahead and move to the chicken. I know there are some things you want to do with the chicken. Do you want to dice it or what are we going to do to prepare the chicken? I'm just going to cut it into more um, serving sizes. Okay. Um, yeah, because we've got some huge breast here. Exactly. Okay. Yes. Great. Now we're ready to begin cutting up the chicken. I think we're gonna trim a little bit of the fat off, although it's pretty lean. So this was a really great cut for the chicken breast. And then we're going to make it into smaller portions or single serving portions. Cause as you can see, this is a pretty healthy breast here. So how can I help? Um, well, if I, when I cut these in half, mm -hmm. um, if you could just trim off the fat from this one and okay. cut it into portions about like about this size. So okay. about three pieces. Three pieces, okay. Great, so are we finished with this piece? We're so finished we... with this. Okay, yes, great. For now. So now we're all done with this. We'll go ahead and would you rinse it? Or we? I know we've already rinsed it before, yes, but I do you already... rinse it again? No. Okay, no need to do that. So that's great. Let's go ahead, move this over, and then we'll get started at the stove. begin actually cooking this wonderful meal. So we're gonna go ahead and start with the onions. Okay, so we're gonna use, to saute them, are we using the extra virgin olive oil? Yes. Okay, are. great, so let's go ahead and get started. Just let me know what you need. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and pour the onions in there. Now we pour all of them in there, which is the three yellow onions that we used, and we dice them up in pretty small pieces. Okay, and we're just gonna let those go ahead and start to saute a little bit. We're not gonna brown them. We just kinda want the water pulled out of them a little bit. We just want them to get soft. Okay. Right. Okay, sounds good. So now I'm just gonna add this paprika right onto the onions. Okay. Like this. And for this particular meal, we use three tablespoons of paprika, which as you can see is, is a quite healthy, well, quite healthy um, helping of it. And then you're just gonna uh, stir this all around. Okay. And so that paprika is all with the onions. It smells wonderful. And, um, just let that cook for about, not even a minute. Okay. Yeah, well, I know you used Hungarian sweet paprika. Right. I've never known that there were differences in the paprika because I, I don't cook with it a lot. I put it, I sprinkle it over deviled eggs <laughs> like right. my mom used to do, right? Right. I put it a little bit in my fried chicken, um, but I don't use it as, as a base component to any meal. So do you notice a difference in the taste or could I just use any paprika for this? Um, I prefer this one um, only because it's really, really got a lot of flavors to it. Okay. I mean, it's really pungent. It's, it's a great paprika to use. Okay. So the sweet, there's also uh, hot paprika, but I prefer to use the sweet for this recipe. Okay, so that's, that's very good to know. So we're gonna let these go ahead and, and cook down a little bit. We're gonna prepare the chicken and we'll be right back. What we're doing now is waiting for the chicken to brown on one side. Um, they've only been cooking for, I guess, just under a minute. So at this point, what are we looking for with the chicken? I just want it to be golden. 
in okay. color. Okay. And uh, because basically it's going to be uh, stewing along with the tomatoes and peppers for okay. about a half hour. Oh, okay. Well, that's easy enough. So right now you're kind of just tossing it in the paprika and the onions, getting make, making sure that it's on both sides. As you mm -hmm. can see, we were able to put everything into one very large, is this a saute pan or a fry pan or? A, I would say it's a saute pan. Okay. It smells wonderful, guys. I really wish you were here and you should be jealous of me because I get to eat this. This is going to be absolutely delicious. So we're gonna let that go ahead and stew a little bit are you gonna place? Okay, let's go ahead and place the tomatoes <laughs> in the tomatoes there. Right in. Okay. Right on top, just like this. And you don't have to add any water to this, nothing, mm -hmm. because all the juices from the chicken will make the sauce. For well, this. that's great. That's and then great. We just turn the temperature down a little and let it simmer. Okay, she turned the temperature down to low. Yeah. And we're just gonna let it simmer. How long are we letting it simmer? Half an hour. A half an hour. Okay, so we're gonna let this simmer and then take in all this aromatic smells. I mean, she's got the onions in here. We've got the green peppers, the tomato, the paprika. It smells wonderful. I cannot wait. I cannot <laughs> wait to taste it. So we'll be right back. on the meal which is the dumplings so I'm not a baker kind of girl so you're gonna have to really break this down for me like I'm a beginner baker because I truly truly am that's my one confession so I, anytime I see flour and like eggs and butter I'm nervous because it tells me you're making something from scratch <laughs> so walk me through this how do we start making the dumplings well we start out with two cups of um, all-purpose flour okay and you put about a quarter teaspoon of salt into that. Okay, and she just eyeballed that, guys. Yes. So you've, you've got to be pretty experienced to eyeball salt in anything. <laughs> now, you can measure the salt okay. and, um, you know, and measure a quarter teaspoon of salt into okay. that. And then you get about three tablespoons of margarine or butter. Okay, is that, this looks like it's softened. Does the recipe call for softened it's butter? It's softened right now and um, you just cut this in. It doesn't okay. matter if it's gotten a little soft. Um, it can be hard or, you know, cold. Right. It can also be a little bit soft, but not really soft. Okay, here's an interesting question. At least I hope it's interesting. This little thing you're using, I don't have one of those. So okay. what is it? It is um, a pastry cutter, they call it. Okay. And this is what you cut margarine or butter or shortening into uh, flour. Okay, if but I don't have one of those, what could I use, use? You could use two knives. Two knives? Okay. Yes, and just cut with a knife. Oh, interesting. And I could show you how to do that. Yes, if you would like. could you? Because okay. <laughs> I don't put a lot of effort into baking, so. So you okay. could just take a knife and okay. just cut it in like this too. Oh, I gotcha. If you have one of those. Okay, okay. So. That works just as well until it gets kind of like a grainy texture to it. Okay. As okay. Well. Cool. So once I've gotten that done, I take the two eggs mm -hmm. and I beat them first in a separate bowl. Yes. I always wondered, you know, sometimes you see people just put it the eggs right into the flour and then they just start to kind of fold it in, and then you see some people who put it mix it up separately. Is do you know why that is? It depends on your recipe and what you're making. Okay. Uh, for the noodles, this is how you make them. You make a little well in the center. Okay. After you've cut on this um, margarine or butter, and you beat the egg just with a fork. You don't need to have a whisk or anything. Okay. So she pulled the flour away from the center of the bowl to kind of make a, not a hole, but a well, as she said. And you can you can pretty much see it how she's pulled the flour away and created a little bit of a crater which she's gonna pour the egg into the center of. 
Now I'm going to fold this over into there. Okay. And this is when it gets a little bit messy. You're actually going to take your fingers and you're going to work this egg all through the flour. What you're going to do once all this egg is incorporated into the flour mm -hmm. and it's kind of looking flaky. Yeah, like I can this. see that. Mm -hmm. Good. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm going to add water to this, about two tablespoons. Okay. Does it matter if it's room temperature, hot, or cold it water? It should be cold water. Cold water, okay. And with the fork, I'm just doing this. Now I'm going to use my fingers to make this into a ball. Okay. Now the water is going to make it less dry and more what? Sticky. More and, sticky? And dough-like. Okay. So now it's getting nice and sticky and dough-like. Right. And I'm going to just form that into a ball. It's looking more like bread. Like a bread, right? It's starting to get like a pastry or a bread. Okay. Right? Pastry or a bread. Well, we're going to let her go ahead and wash her hands off so we can get ready to dump these beautiful dumplings into the boiling water, and we'll be right back. Welcome back. We are now getting ready to make the wonderful dumplings that we just prepared. So now, I, I noticed that we didn't make balls, which is what I kind of had in my mind that we would kind of make little formed balls. So are these just going to be kind of rough spooned out? These are more uh, Croatian style or European style dumplings. Okay. They're not like the traditional huge dumplings in the United States or North America. Okay. So they're actually called spatzel in some countries. Spatzel? Yeah. Cool. Okay. Well, let's, let's have some speed salt, shall we? <laughs> yes, we will. <laughs> now, I noticed that the water isn't really rumbling no. to a boil, so does it matter? But it will be. Oh, okay. So it does need to be at a rumbling boil prior to placing the dumplings inside, and she's just using two spoons to kind of section off a little bit of the dumpling dough, and then we're going to just pop them into the water, yes? yes? Yeah. Okay. So we just grab a little and we pop it in there. They look like they're about a... Oops. What would you say, like a quarter teaspoon size? A teaspoon. Okay, and they are sinking right to the bottom of the bowl, of the pan. Right. Okay. And then when they rise, they float to the top, that's when they're ready. Oh, interesting. See, you learn something every day. <laughs> Some of these are already starting to float up, so we're going to just go ahead and let Jennifer finish placing the rest of the mixture of dumplings into the pan while we get those boiling, and we'll be right back. to the next phase of this delicious meal. I wish you guys could really smell it. This is the mixture of onions, tomato, and green peppers, and it looks like you could just eat it just like that. I mean, I really could just have, I don't know, a vegetable soup maybe. Right. It looks right. really good, but you're actually gonna take this and put it into a blender and puree it? Yes, I am. Okay, well let's go ahead and do that because this is gonna turn into a sauce that she's actually going to pour over the finished meal. So the dumplings are done. We've got these over here just keeping warm. Yes. Okay, until we finish the puree. So we're gonna go ahead, fold this into the blender and get that mixed up and then on to the next phase. Okay. We are now ready to finish off the paprika chicken with dumplings. Now what we're getting ready to do, she blended the vegetables, which was the tomato, onion, and green pepper, and then she added a cup of the sour cream at the end, right? Mm -hmm. um, which gave us this beautiful color. It's a quite thick sauce that she's gonna pour all over the chicken. So let's get ready. Now, I, I noticed, you know, that you put the sour cream in at the end. Now, if a person is not a fan of sour cream, which I'm usually not, I don't eat it on like, you know, the typical things, the baked potato or anything like that. Could you do this without the sour cream? You could probably just blend it and do it without the sour cream. Okay. But we're going to go ahead and, and serve the plates. We're going to invite her wonderful husband in who has been so gracious enough to be sitting in the background watching us prepare everything. And I know he's famished, so we're going to go ahead, sit down, and let everyone taste your delicious meal. 
We are now joined by Jennifer's husband, Eric. Thank you so much for joining us. I know that you're absolutely famished. You've been watching us cook so vigorously in his kitchen all morning, but now we're done. And this is the great part, the part of the show that I think I love the most, <laughs> where we actually get to taste the delicious meal that Jennifer has so graciously prepared for us today. Let's see. This is delicious. Absolutely de delicious. We're gonna finish eating and we'll be right back. On today's show, we prepared chicken paprika and dumplings. To do that, we used about five pounds of deboned chicken breasts and chicken thigh. We were able to get that deboned free of charge at our local grocery at the Delicatessen. We used three medium-sized yellow onions. We used one large tomato and we used the entire thing. One large green bell pepper, three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, three tablespoons of sweet Hungarian paprika, salt to taste, and a cup of your sour cream. Now to make the dumplings, we used two eggs, all-purpose flour, which I'm sure you have in your pantry, and then three tablespoons of margarine. The recipe calls for butter, but we used margarine just to add a little bit of health to it. And as you can see, all these are fresh vegetables, fresh onions, fresh chicken breast. Chicken was not frozen, it was freshly cut. And again, we topped it off with an Italian loaf bread here. This delicious meal serves about six to eight people, and we did it all for about 18 bucks. So just remember, whether you're a top chef or an average Joe, when you cook with love, your food, food will, will always, always be, be delicious. delicious. <laughs> Thanks for joining. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode where we were joined by a very special Average Joe, Jennifer Shuck and her wonderful family who graciously welcomed us into their beautiful home today and we prepared chicken paprika and dumplings. The meal was absolutely delicious, Jennifer. Thank you so much. So if you're interested in the recipe, please log on to our website at www.averagejoecookshow.com and all that information will be there for you.